carry the torch and uh, keep keep the music going. Yeah. I think anyone that saw the show last night will agree. <laughs> Mr. Johnny Neal. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up. What was the question again? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I know it, but I, what do you Justin ask? Bieber, what does he mean to you? <laughs> that was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Almond Brothers, sir. The Almond Brothers. We're here to pay tribute and chat about them. Well, I know, but when you ask me, it seems more important. I mean, yeah, I do. If I, if I'm gonna let that. Okay, here's the deal. When I, when I, uh, <laughs> I think the coolest thing, if you want the legacy thing, is like uh, when I was a kid in high school, I heard Stage Barrel Blues. Okay, now, you know. Okay, now. That started the whole thing, and I played it and played all the, all the brother stuff, and then, I don't know, I, I'm kind of fuzzy on some of it, but, but that, basically the point is that now I've got to play with j with the other brothers, and that was like, whoa, you know, like, oh my God, you know, and then uh, we wrote a lot of songs, and um, no, I think I was the hard head of the band myself, <laughs> but you know, it's cool. And uh, you know, me and Jamo have a little, he was saying to me just a minute ago, that, hey man, uh, tell, tell him about that guy that wanted to play cowbell in the blues. <laughs> Everybody needs more cowbell. Now, and I'm the kind of guy that said, have you cut that shit out? <laughs> Nobody else gonna say nothing but me, I'm all loud mouth over there. But I couldn't take it. I can't have tambourine in the shuffle and I can't have cowbell with the blues. I thought it was good. But, <laughs> but you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 I'll tell you another wild thing, you know, was like, you know, when I played with all of us and then we, we I did some other stuff later. But then I, when you have those two drummers, like, oh my God. It's like, it's like a stallion. You're from a freight train. I'm saying, now I gotta get out of here. Look what me over. But you know, that, and then I went back to one drummer and I'm going, what the hell? What the hell? You know, so I was like, something happened. Somebody cut off my other arm. But I mean, there's no way you could, I mean, there was a dream come true, as cliche as it may sound. But, you know, I just couldn't believe it. The whole time I'm doing it, I'm going, I, I played this shit in high school, and now I'm playing it with the real people, and, that, and that's the great thing. Yeah. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, the inimitable Mr. Johnny Neal. Yeah. I, apolo <laughs> I apologize, J-Mo, but you have to follow that. Tell us, sir, tell us about the Allman Brothers legacy, and obviously it means something probably unique to you, sir. When I was a kid, I wanted to be uh, a jazz drummer because I didn't know what the difference in music was. Still don't a little bit. Um, so I was always too smart for my own good. My mother gave me 50 cents to go take piano lessons. Oh I stopped taking piano lessons. She said, let me do piano lessons. I said, well, uh, I'll take piano lessons when I go to high school. So I was saving my 50 cents to buy a drum. Yeah. They had drums with $50 at Sears and Roebuck. <laughs> Sears and Roebuck back then. Right. Yeah. And um, when I got to high school, they didn't teach piano. They didn't give piano lessons. So it was the drums. Um, and Real good musicians played everything like perfect. And there was a lot of guys and a few women that um, they were great musicians. And there was a lot of the blues musicians that I really didn't like because it didn't, it sounded like they didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> and then Coltrane sounded like he didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> On, on a different level. <laughs> so, playing with all these people, I got tired, I said, I told my mother, I said, I'll be back home. I lived in Duckport, Mississippi. I'll be back home when I make enough money to buy my own ticket. Because every time I go out and play with all these, these superstars and stuff, I'd have to uh, borrow money from my mother to go back to work. So I stayed away from home, I guess, about 
because I used to be on the road for like about six months. Hmm. And um, I, was, I was going for like about maybe almost three years. Because wow. um, I got this call one time. I, um, I played with, with Clarence Carter and I said, this is it. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> so I was gonna go to New York and die, starve to death, being a jazz musician. Mm -hmm. Since that's basically what I was living like. Mm -hmm. So I got this call from Jackie Avery and he said, hey man, he said, uh, Dwayne, Dwayne Allman wanna know if you're playing his band. And I said, uh, oh yeah. I said, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so he, um, he wanted me to go down there and meet Dwayne and these people that we ended up working for, the Capricorn Records, the Allman, the Allman, the, the uh, Walden Brothers yeah. Yeah. and such. So I got on a bus and I went down there because it was a guy named Charles Otis. Uh, they called him Honey Boy. He told me one time when I was in high school, he told me when I was 16 years old, he said, man, let me tell you something. If you want to make some money, he said, go play with them white boys. <laughs> <laughs> there they are, that's what he said. Right and when I was talking to Avery, that light bulb went off in my head like, oh, bing. <laughs> no, people think that's funny. No. That's actually why I went to play with Dwayne, to make some money. There you go. There you go. And it's funny because on my way to New York to play jazz, I discovered jazz in, in, in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Yeah! Woo! Yeah. Right under your nose all the time. Yeah! And um, wow. Dwayne and I played every day when Dwayne wasn't in the session because I had my drums set up over in the studio. And all I did was play, playing with records, still play with records. And then Barry came down there, and oh God, it was like, it was just, it was just unbelievable. So I discovered jazz through Dwayne Allman, I guess, wow. and Barry Oakley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a great trip. So dreams, dreams do come true. <laughs> dreams come true. I think everyone in this audience can say the dreams do come true. And it's, it's a, this is a pretty unique experience for all of us. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. You, it was it was like it was incredible playing with those guys. Because when I played with Dwayne, it was just Dwayne and I played, we played about two or three songs, and like I was hooked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was uh -huh. hooked. And my man Otis, when I went to New York. He said, "Hey man, he said, look, Ray Charles is in town. He needs a drummer." He said, "Call him up and set up an audition for you." He said, "You don't need an audition. You can play the gig." I said, "Honey boy, I gotta tell you something." <laughs> I said, remember what you told me? Go play with some white boys. I said, well, that's what I'm doing. Oh, yeah! <laughs> said, Send my regards to Mr. Charles. Oh, oh my gosh. He said, don't move. Don't move. <laughs> don't move. Uh, uh, Ray Charles is hard on drummers, too. Yeah. 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 Good choice, Taylor. <laughs> yeah, Look at the blind pianist. <laughs> 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 Johnny, that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> so the rest of it, I guess, about 45 years later, um, I guess we played the last gig as a, but there was a lot of, there was a few years in between there where we didn't play, so I don't know whether that counts or not. It all counts. It all counts. We'll take it. All, it all counts. Count I should, it. I should take it? Yeah. All right, I'll take it. Thank take you. it. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. All right. Um, my name is Junior Mack. I was born in 1959. Oh, do I have time for that? Yeah, of course you do. He likes long walks by the beach. He's a Capricorn. <laughs> well, my introduction uh, to the Almond Brothers came because uh, when I was uh, about eight and a half, I started playing guitar or trying to play. And. Um, up until the point I heard the Almond Brothers, I was uh, playing, kind of trying to be like the B.B. King, uh, Freddie King style. Uh, I also uh, uh, learned how to play some Light and Hopkins tunes. And so anyway, I'd, probably around 13 years old or so, I heard uh, uh, Whippin' Post. Yeah. Okay, so it kind of went by, went by. Then Live at Filmaries came out and, like, wow. Um, what 
Dwayne Allman and Dickie Betts did for me was they kind of expanded my musical uh, vocabulary and uh, I started learning Allman Brothers tunes. Um, and this, this went on, this went on, this went on. And then, let's see, I've met Shank Middleton, who's Greg Allman's best friend, I don't know if anybody knows Shank, in Macon, Georgia. And, uh, okay, so we became friends. So let's fast forward to, I guess it was the, uh, I guess it Beacon. So I just heard, I just heard this story the story uh, a couple of months ago. Shank was coming down the steps of the Beacon and he was singing. And J-Mo heard him singing and he said, man, so I need a, a singer for my band, why don't you join my band? <laughs> so Shank said, uh, well, not me, but I got this guy that plays guitar and sings. And uh, I think maybe he could be good for you. So Chank called me and told me to uh, uh, to drop off my bootleg CD at the time. <laughs> and uh, he gave it to J-Mo, and then a few months went by. And then all of a sudden, uh, it was 2005, I got a phone call. And uh, they said, uh, hey, uh, is this Junior Matt? <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, uh, this is, uh, this is J-Mo from the Allman Brothers Band. Oh my so, God. That's what you sound like, J-Mo, in case you were curious. That's what you sound like. That's what we hear, in case you didn't know. <laughs> so then, then he said, uh, says, hey man, uh, I, I've, been, I've been listening to your CD, man. Uh, you, you want to do some gigs? <laughs> and that's, that's how I hooked up with, with, uh, with J-Mo. Yeah. <laughs> so we did our first gig, 2006 in January. And then fast forward, okay, so with that relationship, uh, I sat in with the brothers for the first time in 2006 and like 13 times after that. But the first time I sat in, I looked out into the audience, it was in Massachusetts and there was like 8,000 people, it was a great woods, it was a huge place. And I looked, it looked like the people were stacked one on top of the other. And uh, I'm looking out there, I'm looking, I said, wait, is this my living room? You know, so it was just a kind of magical experience. And that's, that's one thing that the Allen Brothers kind of kind of brought to the forefront for me is like if you're gonna do something do it and do it directly yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean that's yeah. Dwayne's playing and Dickie's playing hits you right between the eyes <laughs> and uh, that, that's what I uh, try to take away from that but, uh, anyway that's awesome.